and welcome to episode two of Muggle Yarns. Today is November 7th. My name is Kate, also known as Misanthropy Knits on Ravelry and Instagram. And I am Becca, also known as RBF42 on Ravelry, Instagram, RB Fletcher on Twitter, and yeah. All right. I think that's it. I don't ever check Twitter, so if I said it, I wouldn't. My Instagram goes there. That's pretty much all that happens at Twitter. <laughs> I every so often check my Twitter, but yeah, most of my stuff goes. Instagram gets fed to Twitter, and yeah. some of my Facebook pages just get fed there. Yeah. All right. We love you, Twitter. Uh. Yay. So welcome back to all of you who watched us last week, and a brand new welcome to everyone who is watching us for the first time. Um, Beck and I have been uh, raving together for many, many years. We played Nerd Wars on Ravelry together, um, it's kind of how we met, and decided that since we're giant nerds, we should get together and talk about knitting and nerding on a podcast. Knitting and nerding! <laughs> Yay! I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and just jump in. Um, we're recording late this week, which is completely my fault. Um, I waitress, so I work nights, and uh, we normally record on Wednesdays, and I ended up working, and then we were going to record on Thursday, and then I ended up working, and then after last night, I was like, no more. I'm taking Friday night off, and so we're recording. So sorry about that, that we're late. Wouldn't Friday have been better tips? Actually, Thursday is better tips. I work at a wings place, and they do um, all you can eat on Thursday nights. I made a lot of money last night. So. Yay! That's yeah. knitting money. <laughs> More knitting money. <laughs> Pretty much the only reason I work is for yarn. <laughs> um, but We'll work for yarn. <laughs> we'll work for yarn, seriously. Uh, unfortunately, my... Uh, Electricity company doesn't really share that philosophy. You should just knit them a blanket and exchange <laughs> it for your bill. Or yeah, they'll knit myself yeah. a blanket because I won't have any heat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the things <clears throat> that we're going to talk about. Um, yes, we'll start we with, should probably with, do that. With our red tape, our... Um, administrative stuff so um i released a new pattern which is really exciting um it's Yay! called kaleidoscopic shawl it's designed for variegated yarns which um i have a lot of these um sitting in my stash just single skeins of brightly colored variegated yarns and i never know what to do with them but i buy them because mostly i buy fandom related yarns and they're all crazy colors <laughs> They really are, like Supernatural yarn. A yeah. lot of hers are highly variegated, and I don't know what to do with them. Yeah, like Nerd Girl Yarns was um, one of the um, companies that I was, that I buy a lot of variegated yarns from them, and um, I love them, and they're gorgeous in the skein. I just, there's only so many pairs of socks that you could make. Um, yes, I so, definitely need to make new socks. You should, because hand-knit socks are awesome. But this is a shawl, and I am a shawl addict. I um, am obsessed with making shawls. Um, as you can see from my wall of shawls behind me. I don't know. Can you see that? There's a lot of shawls. Yeah, not really. There's just some tails. Not so much right now. Um, but so I uh, actually had a dream about this shawl <laughs> uh, and wrote the pattern and had some fantastic test knitters um, test it for me because I... I work by charts, but I know not everyone does. So all my patterns have charts and written instructions, but I can't I write. Written. I cannot write written instructions to save my life. They are always a jumbled up mess. So I have fantastic test knitters who um, come in and like, Kate, you had a little ADD in the middle of this row and you ruined everything. <laughs> Please fix it. So thank you to all of my test knitters. You're awesome. Um, so anyway, that pattern has been released. It's fun for your variegated yarns, and it doesn't have to be um, a lace weight or a fingering weight like most shawls are written for. Um, it's sized so you can use any weight of yarn. Um, and then you use a random number generator or a D20 to decide whether to do another repeat of like a mesh section or to move on to a little border section. 
Um, so it's yeah. So everyone is uh, completely unique. Um, so it's it is fun. It's a fun pattern. Um, and to celebrate that publishing, we decided we are going to have our first giveaway. Yeah. So I'm going to give away a copy of the pattern. Um, I mean, depending on how many people enter, you know, if only like three people enter in our giveaway, I'll probably just gift all of you a pattern. But if we get some competition, <laughs> we'll give away a couple copies. So you're of the saying pattern. if we have more than like five, we'll do a giveaway. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. We'll see how uh, generous I'm feeling on that day. <laughs> um, so let's say from now until the end of November, um, we'll play this game. It's uh, a picture that is flashing up on your screen right now. Um, so suddenly you are all a Time Lord, and the object closest to your left hand is your sin sonic item, which for me is yarn, shockingly enough. Um, one of your parents' Yarn. occupations is your title. So my title is the banker. I and am retired. Retired. Okay. <laughs> and then the last text um, that you sent is your catchphrase. Um, I had to edit mine down because my last text was about <laughs> dinner and it was really long. So I mine was a birthday text. That wasn't so, going to work. I went back one and found um, my last text was, yeah, I can do that, which I feel like is an okay catchphrase. I think so. What did you pick? Um, I picked, what did I pick? I think I picked sweet. <laughs> there you go. Have the one which word. Which is so much better than, oh, happy birthday to your husband. <laughs> Well, you're going to rock the one-word catchphrase, like nine. Well, considering that my title is retired, you know, I guess i got to be sweet, yarn, and retired. <laughs> Although, well, what it's does yarn one... wrapped around needle, so it's pointy what? and painful. What does one do with sonic yarn? <laughs> Knit things. Okay. Make things. Make things and... Okay. All right. So anyway, um, we're going to start a new thread for this giveaway. Um, I'll have the image in there um, so it can remind you what you're supposed to be posting about. Um, just post one um, entry, and I'll use a random number generator to choose winners. Or if it's uh, not a whole lot of participation, seeing as we're a new podcast, you might all be winners. We'll see how that goes. Now, are we going to do it on our Facebook and on our Ravelry? Um, I was thinking Ravelry, or but on our website. I think that um, all We're of those options good. are good, and maybe we can talk about it and decide. <laughs> um, for sure, we'll let you know. <laughs> for sure, we will um, definitely post in all of our places what we decide how to do it. So we'll post on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and. Um, in Ravelry and on our website, what we decide to do. Okay. So that's something to discuss for us. Yes. Um, oh, yes, okay. so that was my exciting thing. So we have a new pattern that we were both actually gifted. Yes. Um, so <laughs> now I'm going to have to say her name, and I'm really sorry if I mispronounce this, but um, Awilda Baumgren sent me um, her crossing the frame mitts. Um, she, this pattern is amazing. So I, I found them randomly. Um, they, they're mitts that have, um, as you can see from the picture, some crisscross effect going on with some buttons, which I think are really cute. Um, looks like they would work really well um, with the self-striping that she has pictured there, but also for variegated yarns or even semi-solid. I think there was a project, a test that was done in semi-solid, but Especially it looks with like it's just, It looks like it's just straight stockinette. Yeah, so, just the, so it looks... The funky I looked at the pattern, and um, it's in the round for the cuff and for the top, and then it's knit back and forth in the middle, and then you get, you know, your assembly with the buttons and everything. Um, so the construction looks really interesting. Uh, so I'm really excited to try those out. I haven't picked out yarn yet, but I do have a lot of self-striping skeins in my stash, so I think that's my, maybe what I do. And is it, is it for fingering weight? It is. It for, is fingering weight. 
Yeah. So she uh, she sent me that pattern, and then um, we had a message conversation back and forth on um, Ravelry, and so she's now watching the podcast. So hi. <laughs> she friended me also. <laughs> yeah. She's so sweet. And then she um, mentioned that she has another pattern um, called Meet Me in Montauk. It's a shawl pattern, mm -hmm. and she said, hey, I heard you talking about how much you love shawls, so check this out. Awesome. <laughs> so I did, and it's beautiful. <laughs> of course. So, yeah, so thank you. I'm so glad you're here and playing with us. And we'll uh, knit up that pattern and talk about that. And this is exactly what we were talking brain. about last yeah, week. exactly. If you want us to knit your pattern or you want us to talk about your pattern, please feel free to send us a message at that email address, yep. which will pop up. And you can find us both on Ravelry. You can leave a message in one of our forum groups, mm -hmm. uh, forums on Muggle Yarns. Um, I am RBF42. Kate is Miss, An Miss Anthropy Knits. You can find us anywhere. So we are more than happy to discuss your patterns and your yarn. Any other projects you're working on? I'm really excited to knit those mitts. They're just so freaking awesome. They look so cool. So speaking of um, getting good feedback and hearing from designers, we've also been hearing from or watchers, viewers, viewers. There's a good word. Viewers. <laughs> we have we have viewers. Yay. Um, surprising number, actually, of viewers and subscribers and Facebook fans after that first week. We might have had a mild like, little, like, excited uh, fangirl squeal when we saw people liking us on Facebook. We have subscribers, and we have people liking our group and people joining us on Ravelry. That's so exciting. It is. Um, so speaking cool. of which, I did put up an introduction thread on our Ravelry group, so we want to know who you are. Come and tell us, um, you know, how you found us, what you like. Um, I don't know, just a little bit about you, because we want to know everything about you. I, I'm very curious to know how you found us, so please tell yeah. us that. It's not like um, we're not both all over social media, but still. <laughs> Very curious about that. Um, and then, yeah, uh, we've got a lot of people who are liking us on Facebook, um, but not as many who have joined our group on Ravelry. So remember to join the group there, too, to kind of keep up to date on what's going on. Um, and for those of you who are not fiber people and you just happen to really like us, Ravelry is free. Yes. You don't necessarily necessarily have to like knitting or crocheting or spinning or dyeing you could still join us just to come and chat with us over there and also um be enabled into loving fibery things because that's what we do on ravelry we enable each other i was actually i received an email from a friend of mine this afternoon and she said hey i know you love to knit what's that group that you're in so i gave her mine and i said because her one of her friend's son is really into knitting. So I oh, said, cool. he should find me on Ravelry, and if he's not on it, he needs to join it. So yeah. Anytime I, I okay. find, I, I'm surprised actually at how many people I encounter um, just in day to day, like when I'm knitting in public, and they're like, oh, I love to knit, or oh, I used to knit, and now I don't anymore. I was like, well, if you get on Ravelry, I promise you, you will start again. <laughs> Because it is yes, it's so addictive. All enabling. Yeah. It's a community of enablers. Yes. And very nice people. People on Ravelry are so much oh, nicer than any other social media me medium. They are. Ravelry is my favorite social yeah. media platform ever. Yeah. All right. You so now that we've extolled the virtues people. of Ravelry. Oh, you want to know who one of our other viewers is? Who? Someone I talked about a lot last week. <laughs> I told Mia uh, Rendy that I was talking about her on Hi, the podcast. <laughs> so she watched us today. <laughs> she has a sick child at home. She's like, are you going to talk about me tonight when you record? Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. But 
That's awesome. Um, oh, and we also have plans to upload to iTunes. So for those of you who like to watch your podcast on iTunes, I'm going to um, put last week's episode and this week's um, up once I get everything ready to post. Uh, so you can subscribe to us on iTunes as well. So I think that's okay. all of our red tape, yeah? I believe so. That seemed awfully drawn out tonight. We kind of keep going off on tangents. Yeah. <laughs> we like tangents. <laughs> We're excitable. What can I say? Plus beer. <laughs> and beer. Oh, yeah. What are you drinking? I am drinking Blue Moon Harvest Pumpkin Ale. I don't drink beer, so I had to text Kate from Publix and ask her what I should buy. <laughs> I do. I prefer beer, I think, to most other um, boozy things for drinking. I am working on, um, we got a growler of dogfish ale, dogfish ale, no, dogfish head, something. Anyway, the the name of the beer is Bitches Brew. It's one of their Halloween beers. Nice. Yeah, um, it's very dark. It's very sweet, so I can't really drink a lot of it. So we've been slowly working our way through this growler. Um, it's kind of heavy, but it's a nice, like, I'm going to have one beer, beer. It looks like Coke. Yeah, it's beer. Finished object, objects. I can't pronounce it in French. That's a Say complete. French. That. <laughs> finished objects. Kate, what are you working on, or what have you just finished? Um, I just finished another test for Mia, so that's pretty much, I told her that, yes, I will be talking about you tonight, because I just finished a shawl. Um, so, it was called Trellist in the, um, testing phases, but it's not anymore. Now it's called, I'm unprepared, that's Espalier. Not so, um, when plants are, you know, put on to trellises to grow up a certain way. Those are called espaliers. So that's what this pattern is now called. Oh, really? Yeah. I had to I just learn it. something new. <laughs> um, it's, it's a really pretty pattern. It um, has two sections that are repeatable, so you can kind of customize it. It has the um, diamond trellis bit up at the top that you can do more repeats of that. And then it has a... Um, section where the diamond, the bottom half of the diamonds turn into leaves, so they're kind of expanding. And then there's a leafy mm -hmm. edging. Um, so I finished up that test. It's um, completely customizable, sizable, and it's available now on Ravelry. Available now. So that was my one thing that I finished. I have not finished anything. Well, I finished one bit of a pair. It's a hoe. But I'm going to put that in the, in the next section. It's a half object. I don't knit as fast as you. And I was. I have a two-hour commute. And I work mm -hmm. all. That's I, I got to say, I'm, I'm not loving the fact that I'm back waitressing, but I am loving the fact that I don't have to do my three-hour commute anymore. And I don't have to. Um, I work weird hours, so I have a lot more knitting time. Um I've been kind of going to town on that, but, um, I don't know, teach his own, you don't have to knit super fast or all the time. Oh Some of us just have, well, I have addictive those, personalities I and <laughs> can't stop. <laughs> I have all those Kickstarter knits to get out, so yeah. I do need to be knitting all the time. But you have a hoe. What? That's what the stockinette zombies call. Things that have pairs, if you finish one of them, it's a half object. It's a hoe, not a foe. Oh. Well, it's a hoe and a third. All right. <laughs> Switch <laughs> transitions nicely into our works in progress. Yeah. Our whippies. Whippy, whippy. So you're working on some so knits. So I have, I have one and a third of my... Knits for my friend Denise, who was a Kickstarter backer. And the pattern called for bulky on, I think, 9 millimeter. Okay. And I don't have those. So How I doubled up my that? worsted. What's the U.S. 
no, no, no. equivalent of nine millimeter. Thirteen. Oh, US nines. It's not. They're okay. US nines. I was wrong. Because these are sevens and they're four and a half. So okay. I used my four and a half millimeters and I didn't have any bulky in the color, so I doubled up some worsted, which I looked up and it said that, that was fine. It wasn't fine. It was so thick, the fabric completely stood up. I got it down to about here, and then it was just like massive. It was just so big. And I gave it to my husband, who's my fingers, a size nine, his is a size 15. Mm -hmm. So imagine that. He put it on and it fit him perfectly. <laughs> so <laughs> I took that off my needles, <laughs> set it aside. <laughs> He said, oh, I'll keep these if you, like, put something on the knuckles. So he might have submits eventually, All right. which will be his first item that he has ever worn that I've made. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he he runs so hot that he doesn't wear scarves or Miami. gloves or I mean... anything. Well, he's from West Virginia, and, you know, we lived in North Carolina. We met in North Carolina, but... He would just wear a jacket and that was it. And he was mm -hmm. fine. But I cast on, so I got like down to there in like, I don't know, six hours. Cause it was really hard to knit it. Yeah. I bet. And then I, when you're getting aside, dense. Yeah. Um, I put it aside and I did single strand also on the size sevens and went really quickly. So, in one night, I finished three quarters of one, and then I took some time off <laughs> to watch TV and um, sleep and work. And then I got about a third of the way done on the second one, and they look great, but they seem a little big. Well, that's why I stopped, because I texted her to ask her to measure her hand. Yeah. She didn't get back to me, but I'm going to see her tomorrow morning, hopefully, and I will just have her try them on. If not, then I get another pair of gloves. <laughs> so <laughs> there's those. And then I have this one pair that was a, of socks that was a dissertation in my last round, the pink and gold ones mm -hmm. that are the coolest construction ever. You basically, they're called hat heel socks. Mm -hmm. You make a little tiny hat and then you make the sides and you connect it up at the front and then you do the foot on one side and the heel on, or the leg on the other side. They are so cool. I just, they are cool. Me. What is that yarn? Um, that is actually supernatural yarns. I can't remember what pattern or what, what it's called, but is it red and gold or pink and gold? It's pink gold. And it has like, gold Stellina throughout it mm. and sparkly socks see. they are they're so I love sparkly socks they are absolutely gorgeous it's supernatural yarn griffin sock it was in the charms club holy smokes last march of 2013 and it's called obliviate nice nice i thought i had another Oh, I have a bunch of stuff from her, but I don't have any more of the Obliviate. But I I love it. It's gold, white, and shades of pink with the gold Stellina in it. And it's it's just gorgeous. If I had unlimited money, I would probably be in every single one of her clubs. Yeah, I um I've caught a couple of her exclusive colorways um that I've been doing on fiber. Um because like I was talking about last week, I, I like big variegated fiber more than skeins of yarn because it's hard to figure out what to do with skeins of yarn. And with fiber, you get to rearrange the colors however you want. But I haven't spun any of it up. All right. Um, so what well, I'm working on right now. Um, currently, as I sit here and knit with you all, I am working on my Nanesuemo sweater. My national did a sweater in a month sweater, the uh, Gelsamina or Gelsamina Erin. Um, we never I figured out how to pronounce it right. I honestly have no idea. Nobody said anything yeah. last week when I said it both ways, so I think I'm just going to keep saying it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, and I am using um, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes, which is probably not the most amazing yarn ever, but it was cheap, and so I bought a sweater's quantity, and I've had it forever. So it felt like time to make it. And it was one of the only worsted sweater quantities I had in my stash, and I wanted to do that knit sweater. It's a really very pretty color. Yes, it's a nice brown color, um, and I don't have a lot of brown sweaters, like even store-bought sweaters. So, um, And I like wearing brown, so I don't really know why I don't have more. But um, I'm kind of in the middle of the sweater back right now. I haven't gotten nearly as far as I should um, based on percentage of stitches and percentage of days passed and um becca you know this about me but i am obsessed with excel yeah spreadsheets it's a thing um so i made (laughs) i made an excel spreadsheet that counted the number of stitches in my sweater and i used formulas and referenced other (laughs) sheets to determine how many stitches i've completed Percentage-wise versus how many days in November percentage-wise have passed, and I am behind, basically. I might have gotten that from you because for every dissertation, I create a spreadsheet and I have it, how many lines, how many stitches, how much percentage, yeah, it's a sickness. So you can keep track and make sure you're working enough on it. It's, It's still a sickness. I use my Ravulous app to keep track of all of my stuff and my, uh, what is it? My, I don't know. I have so many knitting apps. Uh, Bolero, I think is, or Bee Count. I use Bee Count to keep track of all of my patterns. I use Knit Counter. It's, uh, I have Bee Count on my phone, but I use Knit Counter. Um, It's an Android app. And it does the... The counters can interact, and you have multiple oh, projects. Cool. Yeah, that's why I like B count because you can have as many projects as you want. Mm-hmm. From what I see, I mean, when I finish, I actually delete a project out of here because I, I have certain ones that like I'll use over and over again. But if I if I'm done with well, it, I'll delete it. I only use it for my counts, and if I do any modifications to it. I just note that in my, in um, my Ravelry notes. Mm-hmm. And there's actually been so many different patterns that I don't like the way that it's written or I add stuff to it. So pretty much everything I do now has some sort of mod that I just kind of keep it in a Word doc on my computer. Well, that's one of the wonderful things about knitting is that you're making something by hand. You can change it however you want. Like, there's a pattern doesn't mean you have to follow it. It's a guideline. They're just or guidelines. You just make it yeah. up. I mean, that's the whole point of uh, handcrafting is to make it your own. Soapbox ended. Uh, <laughs> the other thing that I'm working on right now is a commission is a boneyard shawl. So I made, I showed you all last week the boneyard that I made in um, um, Tosh Marina Light. And I got another request from the same woman in Massachusetts for another one. So I am making that in query um, merino silk singles in the colorway Quiver, which is a gorgeous, like, silver, um, bluish, gray kind of color. It's really pretty. Is that the one you were going to use? Is that what you were going to use for K's? And then she wanted socks? Um, No, K's was the same yarn, but the colorway was steel. So this oh, is okay. a different one. Um, like that sounded like a the similar name of. Yep. So it's the same. I have, shockingly, I have multiple skeins of the same <laughs> base. Not not shocking at all. Um, <laughs> so I I would say I'm pro- oh so this this shawl I um I made the first boneyard on size eight needles which is huge. For fingering weight. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Like, I saw really big. Boo-boo. But it turned out really nice. It was very drapey. And the singles yarn, when you get them wet, um, since they're not plied against anything, they just kind of foof. And they take up all the extra space. So it's it turned out really drapey, and it was so pretty and so soft. And so um, when I cast on the second boneyard, I used size 6 needles 
which is what I usually use for fingering weight shawls with lace because the lace opens up more and it has the holes and it stretches. Um, so you don't want your needles to be too big or you'll just end up with really holy fabric and it won't look very good. But since the bone yard is all stuck in that, basically, um, I wanted to use the size eights. So I got about a quarter of the way through this ball of yarn on size six needles and I realized I'd done the wrong size. And yeah. it was gonna be too drastic for you to switch? Yeah, oh yeah, huge difference. Um, and I- Which is amazing, cause it's only like one millimeter difference, right? Yeah. It's amazing how much of a difference that actually makes. It, it's a huge difference though. I mean, this fabric, the, the size six fabric was very dense and it would have probably been fine if I just brought, blocked it really aggressively, but since she already had one that was done right, I wanted to make sure that the next one that she wanted that she got from me matched her expectations. And so I right. ripped it out and started over on size eight needles. And I've caught up to where I was and I've passed it a little bit, um, but I'm not as far along on that as I had hoped to be. Yeah, but you had to rip it out, so it's okay. Yeah. Um, and actually the, the yarn held up pretty well to being ripped. Um, I was surprised because singles yarns can be very finicky about being pulled apart. Once they get together, the, um, mm -hmm. the yarns kind of like almost felt together once you, you knit them. So, um, I guess maybe it's probably the silk in it that makes it a little bit stronger and it, it was okay with being pulled out, but it was sad. <laughs> I saw you post about that and I was just like, I was, for you. I was debating not pulling it out, but then I decided that since she already had this expectation in mind, I wanted to make sure I met that expectation. So it wasn't for me or I probably would have just left it. <laughs> probably. But, um, she probably. also has requested a couple of other, um, she's a real big fan of Stephen West designs. So she's requested a couple of other Stephen West designs, um, another shawl and a pair of mitts, which gave me an excuse to order yarn, but we'll talk about that <laughs> later. <laughs> okay. Is that all you're working on right now? That's all I am currently working on. Yes. Okay. Which leads us into our imagining or our planned projects. Yes. We have lots. Right. So my biggest one aside from all the mitts and hats and whatever that I'm working on is I talked a little bit about it last time that outlander cowl mm -hmm. I can't well, wait to see that I, I ordered the yarn last week and it arrived Wednesday Tuesday or Wednesday it's so pretty and it's so soft and it's so squishy and it's knit picks brava bulky and it's absolutely beautiful. And I texted her and I said, oh, your yarn arrived. And she kind of got all, I don't know if I should add some red to it so that it matches my, my hat and my gloves. So she's deciding because I have to hold two strands together and it's, since it's bulky and they're both mm -hmm. gray, I figured I, originally I was going to do a gray and the red together, but that would look a little too tweedy and not her style. Yeah, and so, higher contrast too. Because the way Bra Brava is like a completely solid. There's no, oh yeah, no semi-solid about it. Not so there would be a lot of contrast between them. Right. Um, so I kind of figured that if she wants to have some red in it, I can either like weave some through it at the top mm -hmm. and at the bottom, or just hold triple. Oh my God. Um, yarn for the first couple of rows and then for the last couple of rows. Or you could use like she Brava Sport time. as your red instead of bulky. Well, it's actually, so it's, um, it's a Knit Picks. I think it's, uh, I can't remember which one it is. It's one of their worsted. It is the softest yarn I have ever felt. It feels like it's cotton, but it's not. It's one of their acrylics, mm -hmm. I think. It might be cotton, I have no idea. But <laughs> I bought so much of it. I was in a test knit for this sweater, and when I purchased it, it was, the girl had no idea what she was talking about, so she vastly overestimated, and I bought my yarn based on that. Right. 
Granted, they're only 109 yards in each ball, so it wasn't terrible. So 50 grand I, balls? Yeah. Yeah. I had so much left over that I basically, everything was red for like <laughs> the longest time. Everything I was knitting was in that color, and I will find it in a minute. It's Knit Picks Comfy Worsted. I had 16 skeins. And that is a cotton, isn't it? Um, it looks like, yes. 75% okay. cotton, 25% acrylic. Yeah, I think I've gotten and a couple of emails from them about like comfy dish gloss or something. But it stretches so beautifully. Like it is unbelievable. But it That's ended up, cotton. it was a, yeah, it ended up it, um, being a cardigan, like a really short sleeve cardigan that I feel like I kind of want to add more sleeves to it. Yeah. And I wear it all the time, and it only took eight skeins. Half. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, that so is a lot I of extra yarn. Done, let's see. So she got a hat and a pair of gloves in that yarn, and then I did a scarf for a swap, and I did mitts for a, sc uh, a swap, and I still have three yet le uh, skeins left. I've done so much with it. It's it's awesome, and it's beautiful. The color is amazing. But what colorway is it? It's pomegranate, so it's like a super, mm -hmm. like a deep wine red. It's nice. so amazing. It's beautiful. Nice. But I have so much of it. So. It's enough that you never want to uh -huh. see it again. <laughs> yeah. I kind of, like, don't ever want to buy it again. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited for that project. So I bought that for her in, like, a really, really nice, like, deep gray. Mm -hmm. And because the pattern says, and, I, like, there's a whole bunch of people that have knit it, and it says it's really, really quick, like, you can get it done in, like, two evenings. Mm -hmm. I might have bought myself yarn to make myself into. So you're imagining two Outlander cows. But I live in Miami, and it was cold a couple days ago, and it was like 55, and I walked outside in short sleeves, and I didn't realize that it was cold. <laughs> but it was really, really pretty. And I also bought um, a deep, like a midnight blue, and like a, a red in the Brava um, worsted and then I bought what it, what was it that I picked I think it was Wool of the Andes Bear to, oh, to cool. dye my own cool but I haven't dyed it yet are you going to Kool-Aid dye really it? Dizzy. yeah probably so I'm looking down because I'm cabling without a cable needle <laughs> I know if I was knitting if I was doing this, this glove mitt I would you would only see this the whole time. You would see the top of my head. <laughs> so that's what um, I am imagining. So what are you imagining? Um, so I'm still imagining my socks for my sister, those bumblebee hand-spun socks. Um, I did not cast them on um, this week like I had planned because I ended up ripping out my boneyard shawl. Um, so the, I balled up the yarn which looks really cool in this game. I really like this hand spun. It's cool. So I'm kind of sad it's going away. And it's so soft. The it's like crazy, amazing soft. Like not even fair that it's going to be socks. <laughs> um, it is Merino. Um, I want to say it's a blend. I don't think it's Merino Bamboo. I think it's Merino Tensel. Now I'm second guessing myself. Hold on. Oh, Merino Sea Cell. That would be why it's so soft. So Sea Cell is a, um, it's a, a synthetic fiber made out of seaweed. And it was actually, oh, wow. it, it, it resembles silk, basically. So like Sea Silk yarn is silk and Sea Cell. And it is so soft. It's amazing. Um, and I made my wedding shawl out of sea cell, so it behaves a lot like silk. Um, but I think it's even softer than that, honestly. Like I, 
I have worked with merino silk blends that are not this soft. Um, so anyway, those are going to be socks, and hopefully the sea cell will give them enough strength for heels. Oh, horrible. They're going to be on her feet. That's okay. That's what she wanted. Um, speaking of people wanting socks, the other thing that I am imagining is um, a pair of socks for Kay, my stepmom. She, so I was talking to her on Facebook, and she asked what um, my husband and I were going to want for Christmas. And I was like, I don't really know. What about you? <laughs> and she's like, well, you know, do I rate a pair of socks? I keep stealing your dad. So I was like, yeah, you can have a pair of socks. <laughs> I already knew she was shawl. <laughs> But I'll make you a pair of socks. And so we had this um, conversation about what she wanted. She likes neutral colors, like I said last week. Um, but I was like, so I have some really cool yarns that have, like, neutral colors, but then a pop of color. Are you okay with something like that? And she's like, yeah, that would be okay. It would it'd kind of break me out of my comfort zone. I was like, well, you know, they're socks, so you're allowed to be a little crazy. Um, it's not like you're wearing a sweater made out of this yarn. <laughs> Um, and so we settled on another um, query um, skein that I have. It's her sparkle sock, um, and the color is called Bright Lights, and it's basically like the 80s threw up all over this yarn, and it makes oh me God. so happy. So it's um, blacks on her sparkle base, um, black with just a rainbow, neon rainbow. Um pink and yellow There's nothing and really purple about and, that. and bright like cyan blue it's amazing <laughs> it's just a very small section of the big black so it's going to be like black oh. black 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 rainbow black 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 rainbow oh that's so cool so and sparkles so i'm actually really oh. excited about these socks now <laughs> i can't wait to see those um so that <laughs> as soon as I got it in the mail and I put it in my uh, Ravelry stash, the notes on my um, stash page say, in all caps, this makes my heart so happy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm imagining those socks as well. So I'm about to go on a sock kick, apparently. And this segues into our stash enhancements. What have you added to your stash? Well, my Knit Picks yarn arrived, which I have already spoken about. I'm so excited about it. It's so soft and squishy. Um, it's crazy. I've been getting, like, boxes and boxes and boxes. Like, every day some new package has arrived, and only one of them contained yarn, and it was kind of sad. That is really that only sad. only one of them contained yarn. They were mostly from Amazon and finally Vistaprint. But um, that's another story. <laughs> We'll get to we'll that. We'll talk about that in the general life stuff. So, um, okay, so that has arrived. And then the Kickstarter that we both backed, which was the Twist Fiber, which I love how my note says, what did I order? <laughs> <laughs> so I did the, um, the Fiber Reward, even though I have never spun before. Enabling! And Kate, Kate has been enabling me forever that I need to learn. So I did the fiber reward, and I picked BFL, we think, mm -hmm. we hope. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we actually have this long conversation about what to pick. Um, generally, um, people tend to like BFL when they start, which is uh, Blueface Blue Lester um, is a breed from um, the British Isles. Um, it has kind of a longer staple, which means that the fibers are longer um, when you spin them. So they're, I don't know exactly how long. I mean, it, it varies, but it like, like four to six four inches, to six I think. Inches. Yeah, so the, the fiber staple is longer, and it's kind of a grippy fiber, so it's less likely to just draft apart while you're spinning. So that's why it's one of, of a good choice for beginners. I am also shopping for a drop spindle, and Kate has been schooling me on what I should get, which is, what, under one ounce? Well, and I would say around an ounce. Top. Yeah, so somewhere between oh. one ounce to one and a half ounces. Um, beginner spindles tend to be really heavy, and you end up with um, thick and thin yarn, and it drops a lot more. Um, 
the theory behind having a heavier spindle for beginners is that it will spin longer because the momentum goes longer, but it gets heavier. And so it kind of yeah. doesn't really balance out. So somewhere between well, one and 1.5 ounces. Um, and top whorl, I think, is easier to learn on than bottom whorl because the hook is at the top, so it gives you a place to kind of hitch your yarn, whereas on a bottom whorl spindle, you have to tie a knot on it to keep it, a half hitch knot to keep it on the spindle. Um, so it's just one less thing to think about. And you also spin it from the bottom, which I think is easier to flick. We're going to have a whole Kate oh God, and I'm Becca so do spinning episode once the spindle arrives. So, yes, I have been scouring Etsy, and I have, like, five windows open that you sent me the other day. Yeah. And I just never got around to looking at them and measuring out the, the merits or whatever. So mm -hmm. I, I will be buying a spindle in the next couple of weeks, hopefully days. It's so, definitely uh, um, going on, you know, Etsy or um, – Really, anywhere oh that you so would shop for something. There's so many options. It is very overwhelming. So, so definitely recommend um, asking someone. You can ask me. I'll, I'll answer questions about spindling. There are um, also a lot of groups that have, you know, a lot of groups dedicated to spindling specifically, but those can get really overwhelming too. Um, I learned a lot of what I know about spinning in the Nerd Girl Yarns forums. They they are very, very helpful and um since Nerd Girl Yarns does yarn and fiber, they talk about, um, you know, different breeds, what's easy to spin, um, what kind of um, spindle you should get. Um, so they're they're very beginner friendly in that form. So I recommend them a lot too. Anyway, so your stash, stash enhancement. enhancement. So I backed a um, Kickstarter called Color Me Happy. Um, and uh, that reward arrived. So um, the base that I received, the yarn that I got, um, is called Really Happy um, Sock. Really Happy Sock. And it is a BFL nylon blend. It's 75% BFL, 25% nylon. So it will make very good socks. BFL is awesome for socks because it's a little bit more hard wearing. But the color is a semi-solid kind of um, tealy green, more green than teal, called First Timer. And um, it's so pretty. And it um, it might end up being a shawl, even though it's BFL. It's not, it's not super scratchy like some BFL bases can be. Um, so it might end up being a shawl. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that was one thing that came. And then... Um, I participated in the Nerd Girl Yarns Halloween Swap, um, which I have a whole big story about that um, that I'll talk about um, here in a minute. But So one of the stipulations of the swap is that you had to include a skein of Nerd Girl Yarns or braid of Nerd Girl Yarn fiber. So I got from my swap partner um, a Halloween-specific colorway. Um, inspired by Jason. Um, mm -hmm. So it is a really pretty, like, um, gray and kind of a gray-toned brown and red. Um, and that came from Mitsuki. Um, that, my whole package was amazing, but this yarn is so pretty. Um, and it, it's not so overwhelmingly variegated that I don't think it could be... Like, I think it could be used in a shawl. And it was on um, the... The Nurgle Yarns Base Heart U, which is uh, 490 yards of light fingering, so it has great yardage for shawls, and it's my go-to base for everything from there. I get all of my, like, oh, I want this color, Heart U, this color, Heart U. It's my go-to. So she totally hit the nail on the head on that one. And then actually, since I wrote our notes, I got some uh, yarn in for those custom orders. So I have two skeins of um, Knit Picks Tweed, Stroll Tweed, for a pair of mitts in the Autumn Heather colorway. This hasn't even gone in my stash yet. It's, it's that new. 
Um, and then I got two skeins of Tosh Merino White in the colorway Cove, which is going to be a um, a shawl for a shawl. A shawl, <laughs> shockingly, blue whale. Blue whale is the pattern by Stephen West that I'm going to use that yarn for. So I'm not going to pull it out because it's in cellophane and it'll make a horrible noise. Um, but I'll post a picture. It's pretty. So, Kate, what you watching? <laughs> um, so I have been a total Doctor Who slacker this season. I've had a really hard time getting into it. I, and that happens, I think, sometimes when we switch actors for the Doctor. Like, that happens, I guess. But I finally got caught up on this season. There's another episode airing tomorrow, so I can say, as of right now, I am caught up. <laughs> Um, I have to say, last week's episode was my favorite of the season. Um, I I was glad we got our big reveal. I don't want to be too spoilery. I guessed I, it the second that that person appeared. Agreed. I think everybody did. Uh, yeah. I think everybody was like, well, it would make sense if it was, you know, if she was that. But that's so obvious that I don't really want to believe that that's I true. Know. Yeah. I, I when it finally is not confirmed. Hmm? Moffat is not that obvious. I know. Yeah. So I don't know. I I like the episodes individually. You know, I like it as standalone kind of one episode story arcs. Um, but the signature Moffat intrigue this season, I feel a little let down. Not really. Hi, baby. Not really loving this season. Like, I love Peter Capaldi. I think he's yes. an amazing actor. I absolutely feel like he, both Steve and I, my husband, we think that he is just not getting, I guess, the writing that he should be getting. Mm -hmm. Because he plays the hell out of the acting that he's given. He yeah. acts the hell out of I given, love but... him as the curmudgeon doctor. Like, I think that, that it's a good time to move from Eleven, where he's, like, a giant kid, to a doctor who's... We have a guest star. Oh, hi. Hey, birthday girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so just moving from, from that, you know, Matt Smith, um, awkward, lanky, goofy doctor to... A doctor that's more um, refined. Yeah, and and just not as I don't know, not as lovable. Like he he, he you can tell he's a big softy on the inside, but he's got such a grrr exterior, and I really yeah, like that. Absolutely, I really like that, and um, I just wish that everything was more cohesive. But I felt the same way about Matt Smith's last season, too. Like, I honestly, I think back on that season, and I I could pick out maybe one or two episodes that I even remember. But the rest of it is just like, uh, yeah, it was kind of weird that season. So, I don't know. It's it's not as exciting anymore as, I like, when it's I first really watched it. I don't wake up on Saturday mornings and get really excited to watch Doctor Who. Yeah. And it really has nothing to do with the new Doctor. No, and and I am actually quite the Clara fan, and I, I love her. I know you're not. But yeah. I I love her, and, and I think that what really did it for me was the snowman, the Christmas special. She was amazing. She was just like... Mary Poppins, let me tell you, I really, Queen. really like Clara awesome. as um, a souffle girl. I really liked her in the Christmas special. I really liked her as the impossible girl. And then they, again, that whole, you know, signature Moffat intrigue that spans multiple episodes, I was so disappointed by what they did with her. At the end of it, I was like, this is a cop-out. It's weird, and I didn't like it. So I don't... No, and, and what... As a character, like, I actually kind of liked the fact that after the regeneration, she kind of plays um, almost like what Donna was, where she's not in love with the Doctor. Um, she calls him on his crap, and I was really hoping that that would get explored more. But now I feel like, um, you know, with her lying to the Doctor about um, 
the about... thing she lies about. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get so spoily, but you know, lying no, that spoilers. everyone is okay with her staying with him on you know on the TARDIS. Um, well, what kind of I've seen a lot, and what kind of is pissing me off is her boyfriend Danny. Mm-hmm. She, I mean, you see her a little bit with him, and you see what she's doing, and then she's on the TARDIS, and there's conflict there. But all of a sudden, in this last episode. Her, you know, her emotions got the best of her. How do you say that without spoiling it? Yeah. Her emotions got the best of her, and I was just kind of like, I don't understand. We haven't really seen them explore that much of a relationship yeah. to warrant her reaction. That's good and spoiler-friendly, right? Yeah. No, because I completely agree, too. Um, they, they really haven't... Um, there was like the really weird first date with Danny where everybody got really yeah. offended easily, which I didn't, that was a weird dynamic too. Like, why are you all getting so upset about these things? But anyway, so there was that. And then, so, and like you hear all of their students, all the kids talking about how, um, Ozzie Mr. Pink and Miss Oswald are in love, but you don't really see it that much. Mm-mm. And then you're right. And then in this last episode, you're like, Oh, but, like we were kind of when it happened we kind of looked at each other like the thing with the keys and we were like what just happened like why is she freaking out so much the pacing has been really weird like they just decided in this last episode that their entire relationship is going to culminate in like the first 10 minutes of the episode so and and you know Steve is he was not a lost fan mm-hmm. and he just thought it was like so slow and he's like this season is like lost <laughs> he's like you have to do you know what I'm saying though he's like you have to watch every single episode and at the same time you're watching it and you're like I don't understand what's going on like yeah what just happened Anyway, so I'm along the lines the of life's too oh. short to watch television you don't like. I'm not gonna give up on it. I just I oh, like no, to no, talk no. about I'm it. Very, I'm very excited for tonight's tomorrow night, Saturday's finale. Very yeah. excited. And then, I mean, I heard that that she's leaving in the Christmas special, so I'm not really looking forward to a new companion like i love clara but i don't i don't love what she's doing right now yeah i i am curious to see um where they go with the next companion i think that given the last week's episode that it it makes sense for her to come to an end i think at this point you know they have the finale and the christmas episode coming up i think that um it will make sense for her to stop um if if um, the character of Danny had kind of segued into a second companion like um, Arthur Darville did, I thought did, that it was. I thought it would too. Um, and if you know, if it had become like an Amy and Rory dynamic, then it would have made sense for her to stay. But since he, since Danny was so anti doctor and and the doctor is so anti soldier, um, well, that yeah, it makes that's sense true, I think, but... for her to leave. But, uh, I mean, apparently, according to the finale, like, there was much more of a relationship than anybody realized. And, and that's weird I to mean, me. Like, why would we I, not see that? It kind of feels like a Rose-Mickey relationship, where it's just kind of like, whatever, he's just some guy I was dating. Yeah. And, but it's not. Like, it's, like, so serious, and, and I, I did not get that impression at all. When they said that he was coming on as a new companion, I thought he would be traveling with them. Yes. I didn't think it was just some guy that they would be meeting and that that would be her school half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. I don't know. Interesting. Things will be changing. Yeah. So I, 
I have been so obsessed, so obsessed with Arrow and Flash this season. Um, so Did I you watched, watch the last, uh, no. the last Arrow? I haven't. It came up on my Hulu tonight, and I was going to watch it, but then Patrick and I hung out instead. Patrick's my husband. Um, so I didn't get to it. I was, I was going to watch it tonight, but I forgot that that oh. was the thing. So anyway. My favorite part of this show is that I get John Barrowman on my TV again, even though he's yes. evil. I don't and care. He does evil so well, though. I oh, know. my gosh. But you just kind of feel like he's going to be like, psych. <laughs> <laughs> he, I love him. He's just like He is good amazing. and evil. He really is. And I follow him everywhere. I follow him on Twitter and Facebook. And him and his husband, like, they so travel. Adorable. Everywhere together they are. They are so Did you see their cute. Halloween pictures? Yes. I'm in love with him. I don't care that they're gay. I am so in love with him. Like, see the picture that I just post. Because yes. I have to come in here somewhere. Um, but I, I'm, I'm so in love with this man, and he is so funny. So I met him last year at Megacon, and I also met... Eve Miles and Gareth David Lloyd, who mm -hmm. are on Torchwood, Torchwood, who, which is also where we originally know Peter Capaldi from in the Hooniverse. But well, he was I actually on. Um, he was on Pompeii, the Fires of Pompeii first. When, when oh, was he? Okay. Donna was with. I watched Ted. it totally yeah. out of order. I think that that happened before he was on Torchwood. Um, and also, those seasons of Torchwood, badness, and I don't like to think yeah, of them. Yeah. But anyway, I got to meet him, and I got to hug him, and I got to take my picture with him, and I was, like, grinning from ear to ear for, like, the entire <laughs> weekend. I think I, I I waited in lines, like, the entire weekend, and Steve was just, like, walking around, and he's like, are you done yet? I'm like, don't know. <laughs> But I got a bunch of stuff signed by him, and then I got to hug him and take a picture with him. And I, my grin is even bigger than it is right now. But it was amazing. But um, when we were waiting for the pictures, because they kind of just, like, set them all out on a table, and Steve was looking for mine, and or he was just kind of wandering around while I was standing in line. And he's like, every other celebrity, because, you know, if you've never been to a con – they kind of, like, drape off these areas, and you stand in lines that have, like, a million people in them. Mm -hmm. and you literally have, like, two seconds to get in, smile, and move on. Every other celebrity, like, they have these weird rules. You're not allowed to touch them. You're not allowed to stand, you know, you have to just stand next to them. And they're kind of boring. Yeah, that's kind of weird. The Potter, like, it seems like the Potter fan, uh, the Potter celebrities... And any Doctor Who people are, like, hysterical. And Will Wheaton, he's pretty good, too. Mm -hmm. But Steve was walking past the line, and he's just, like, looking at all these pictures, and it's, like, people standing next to each other. And then you see John Barrowman's, and he's just, like, all over the place. He's <laughs> hugging everybody. There's this one group of people, and, and there was one of the guys was in a wheelchair, and I can't do it because my screen's this big. But he's sitting in the guy's lap, and he's just, like... <laughs> That. And it's that's him, like that's his personality. I think every picture I've ever seen him take with a fan, he's like hugging them or giving him a kiss oh, or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and that's like I love him in in Arrow, but he's like not evil like him. At, yeah. And complete opposite. Well, I'm really yeah, glad that he's back this season. Um, I never for a second believed that he would die. Um, oh no. But. It is good to see him again. Oh, yeah. Uh, but one of the fun things about watching both Arrow and The Flash is, obviously, there's crossover, because The Flash is a spinoff from Arrow. Um, but Arrow takes itself so seriously. Like, everything in this show is so dark. And then The Flash is just, like, completely irreverent and hilarious. Well... And, like, the main wasn't... hero is a joke. He's just... I mean, he's hilarious. I don't know. He, it's just, it's so... a good compliment to watch both of those shows. So we were having this discussion last night. What's the age difference between Oliver and Felicity and Barry and Felicity? Like, are Barry and Felicity the same age? Because I thought that they're kind question. of the same age. But Steve is like, no, he's so much older than her. He's She's Barry's age. 
Like, no. I think she's younger than Ollie, but Ollie isn't that old. He's really not. Um, he is like he's 21, just had 22. A lot of bad life experience. Um, but, and then Barry is... So, I think he's... He was, like, just out of college Yeah. in the first season, like, when it, he came back and it was five years. So he's maybe, like, 26, 27. And I think Felicity's probably, like, 23. I mean, she's done through college and she's yes. got her master's and, like, six master's degrees. I mean, she's probably about the same age. I mean, she's a prodigy, so she could have been, like... She could be younger. I kind of, I kind of get the idea that she's younger because she's... I mean, she is so much more naive um, and kind of isolated and socially awkward which makes me think that she probably you know like you said she's a prodigy so she probably went to school and was younger than everyone around her um right because she is so awkward but i don't know but barry comes across much younger than both of them right but then there's still that whole like dynamic between the two also the last episode that i watched where like felicity decided that she was gonna go off and she doesn't want to die in the basement blah, 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 and she's gonna live her life and she's gonna go visit oh, barry was... and then oh that was, i go and that, i watch the flash i watched the flash right after and i was expecting her to be in it and she wasn't so i'm, I'm guessing it's in this next week's that i haven't seen yet so then you're not caught up on the flash yeah. she was in the whole episode of it. okay I was just irritated because I was like crossover it, and it didn't happen. <laughs> when you when you get to the ending of it, you're gonna be really happy because you and I have the same. You and I have the same. Okay, anyway. awkward cheer dance over. <laughs> <laughs> this is what fangirls do, guys. Come on. Um, okay, so also watching. Um, so I own. All seven yeah. seasons of the Gilmore Girls. And yeah, Me too. when it comes on Netflix, um, and there's like all the hoopla about it, I am totally buying right into it. Um, <laughs> so I'm rewatching Gilmore Girls. I'm on season four. Um, so she's at Yale now. It's still pre Logan. Um, I didn't Dean like Logan. is married. The dragonfly is happening. Dean's so anyway, one of the great benefits of watching um, on Netflix versus, like, DVDs or, um, you know, just on files that you have is that Netflix keeps track of where you are for you, so you don't have to, like, remember which episode you watched last. So which that's DVD my... Which was last. Yeah, so that's my excuse for watching it on Netflix, even though I have all of them. Yeah. Yes. When I first... when. Steve and I first started dating, I talked about it a lot, because I guess mm -hmm. it had, I don't remember when it went off the air, but it was fairly recent, and I talked about it a lot, so I come home from work one day that he was working the night shift, and I'm like, why are my Gilmore Girls DVDs that people thought I was watching? <laughs> he watched all of them. That's <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's so, so he understands me. But he's Aww. like, he loved MASH, and they had the same kind of banter. So mm -hmm. he's like, I totally love it. It's the same as Nash, I'm like, but different. A little bit different topics. Yeah. Little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, my husband, um, his his standard gift for his mother for birthdays and Christmas for like two or three years was another box set, another season. So he's like kind of tangentially seen all of them, so he kind of understands it too. Um, but yeah, I love Gilmore Girls. I will never not love Gilmore Girls. So I'm I'm actually I'm on a supernatural kick, which I've never seen it, and I think I'm almost done with I know I'm almost done with season five, and do you know how hard it is because we I, every single show on the CW I watch so they always have commercials for it. I'm like, what do you mean you're in season 10? I'm on season five. I know. And Steve's like, oh yeah, Dean's a demon. And I'm like, I know that because I, I like spoilers. Haven't, haven't been watching that either, but um, Dean's a demon. And I was so upset and I don't know what's happening and I don't have context, but it makes me really like, I haven't watched it. I don't know what's happening either, but I am Apparently also... demon Dean is a lot sexier than normal Dean though. From what I can gather. That's from That's the hard girls. to picture because he's hot. Castiel's my favorite. <laughs> yes, I love Misha. Real life. Real life. Okay, <laughs> I've kind of alluded to this earlier. I was in that nerd girl yarn swap, and uh, 
misaddressed my first swap package outgoing to my person. She was. Is that what happened? Yeah, that's originally what happened. So I sent it priority mail, which is two to three days. It arrived, and I got the message that it was undeliverable, and I checked the address, and I was like, oh, crap, I, I sent that wrong. Took 10 days for it to get back to me. It's not priority in return. Apparently not. Um, and, of course, I'm on a deadline on this, right? So, like, this, the package is supposed to be there by October 31st for Halloween. And I'm like, okay, come on, get back. Like, I sent it in plenty of time. Um, like, a week and a half early. Like, the, the very first day that was acceptable to ship, I sent it the next day. So, it took took 10 days for it to get back to me. Oh, my gosh. I finally got it, sent it out one day, Priori Priority Express. Um, at this point, it's already November 1st. So, by the time it got back to me, it's already November 1st. So, you I sent it. You would let her know, at least. Yeah, yeah. And I sent her a card, and I was like, hey, so I had a dur moment, <laughs> and uh, your package is on its way back to me, and as soon as I get it, it'll come back to you, I promise. Uh, so she knew what was going on, but um, I, I sent it one day. Guaranteed uh, delivery day was on Tuesday, and then it didn't actually get delivered until Wednesday. Um, and so I... Uh, wrote an email, like, I got on their, on the USPS website and, um, followed their links of what I was supposed to do if I needed to request a refund, and so there's this form email thing that you fill out, you put in the tracking number, you put in, you know, the date that it was supposed to be delivered, and then you write a little note. Well, apparently the only part of that whole form that I filled out that gets transmitted was the little note part. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So, and I, I don't know how this gets routed or whatever, but the person who called me back was from my local post office, which I wasn't really expecting since they weren't responsible for its delay. Um, so they called me and um, I had to read the freaking tracking number out like six times. Tracking numbers are long. I know. Um, and so the woman who I was talking to kept messing it up when she was typing it in. So I read it to her like six times. This is going on and on for a while. She finally figures it out, gets it in. She's like, oh, guaranteed delivery by Tuesday. It didn't get delivered till Wednesday. Like, oh, really? That's exactly Thank what you I told Columbia. you. Um, and she's like, okay, well, let me put you on hold. I figure out what you can do to get your money back. It sounds yeah. like the same lady I spoke to. Did you not figure this out before you called me? Like, isn't that the whole point? Uh, like, shouldn't you have the answer before you call me back? So I sit on hold for, like, five minutes. Ravel, you know, ravelry the whole time, because I'm just waiting. <laughs> and she finally gets back on. She's like, okay, well, you're going to have to come in to get your refund, so just bring your receipt. It's like, but I print the postage at home so that I don't have to go to the post office. But it was like 30 bucks to do the, the express. So, yeah, I'm going to come in and get my refund. Yeah. Oh, my God. Could you make this any more complicated and difficult? <laughs> or just deliver my crap on time. That was sad. Let's, let's segue that into my USPS is the devil story. So I did a Kickstarter. And some of my rewards were bags that had logos on it, and they're so cute. And I also got, like, little note cards that were personalized and, like, these little stickers. And great. I ordered them, like, a month ago. Like, the campaign ended. I placed my order. I was super happy. I was hoping to ship everything out, like, in the beginning to mid-December, Great, no problem. So it shipped. I was very excited. Yay, Vistaprint, you shipped my package. Did I mention that it was Vistaprint? I don't know if I did. I, I'm so in love with them right now, like I can't even begin to tell you. So it shipped. It was supposed to arrive on the 25th. We were home the entire day. Mm -hmm. The entire day. It was a Saturday. I checked the mail because, uh, of course, when I get a shipping notification, I check it religiously I continuously up yeah so it says it should have delivered it on the 25th I go and I look outside I'm like there's no package so 
So we walk over to the mailboxes, and there's a little slip in the mailbox that says, we tried to deliver, insufficient place to leave it, it's at your post office. Our postman leaves stuff on our doorstep all the time. It's kind of funny. He covers it up with our doormat. Because <laughs> that's going to make it tricky. Like, nobody's going to see it there. <laughs> you can't see it. It's an invis- invisibility mat. Well, come here. So that was on October 25th. Come here. That was a Saturday. October 27th, Monday. Steve goes to the post office to try to pick it up. They can't find it. They have no idea what we're talking about. He hands them the slips for two, for one for him, one for me. They mm-hmm. come back with two packages for him. And he's like, uh, one of these was supposed to be for my wife. Neither one of them is for her. And they're like, well, we don't know where it is. Try call, try ask your postman, your your mailman, the next time you see him. Like your individual mailman is gonna know where it, it ended up. He actually knows who we are. Like, yeah, we but live in I apartment mean, complex, but once it goes back to the post office, it's like it's out of his hands, right? So like, how would he know where it is? Well, it turned out he was not on duty that day because if he was, he would have left it on our porch. He would have left it there, no problem. So I called, trying to track it down. I filled out a form online, trying to track it down to have it re-delivered. Nothing. He actually comes over to the house, and my husband is in school, and he stays home most of the day studying, and he works part-time. But the guy comes, and he knocks on the door, and he's like, oh, you tried to get this re-delivered. We don't have it. We don't know where it is. Maybe it got sent back. So, meanwhile, two weeks later, I'm still trying to track this down between the post office and the main post office and all this stuff. Finally, I get a phone call from them, and I I talk to them, and I'm like, look, this is the story. This was really, really important. The first package I've ever, like, seriously, desperately needed. Yeah, like, this isn't just for fun. This is, like, for, yeah. This is, like, I owe this to people. And they're just like, oh, we're really sorry. Let us take your information again. I'm like, why do I not have an account? Like, note it in my account. So I was, call- I told Steve, and he's like, just call Vistaprint, see if it got returned to them. Yeah. So I filled out the form online, and I was like, look, I, I ordered this. It was supposed to be delivered on the 25th. Here's my order number, blah, blah, blah. I just want to know if it got returned to you or, you know, if I have to place another order. Yeah. They email me less than 24 hours later. Come here. Less than 24 hours later. Oh, we see that it should have been returned, that it should have been delivered by now. And we're very sorry that it hasn't been due to this problem. We are going to reprint and expedite the order to you. Is this your correct address? No charge. Like, oh my gosh. I love you. I love you forever and ever and ever. That's amazing. <laughs> So that happened, and I'm and like, then, and then to expedite it on top of that, like that's huge. I know, because I was like, look, I'm really sorry, but these were my Kickstarter rewards, and I had to get them out, and I just need to know if I need to reorder them. I didn't ask them for a replacement. I just said I want to know if they got returned. Yeah. So I get a text notification because, of course, I signed up for it. Yeah. And I get a text notification that says, your package has been delivered. So I text Steve and I go, oh my God, did it really just get delivered? (laughs) Like within three seconds, I'm texting him and he's like, what? How do you know that? (laughs) He he actually had to go and open the door and and get the package off of his tab. (laughs) So it arrived. Yay! And they were so cute. And they're adorable. And yes, they are fantastic. Meanwhile, Vistaprint is expediting me a whole nother set, which I'm, like, forever grateful for. That's amazing. But I'm just so happy that they arrived. Mm. And I kind of feel like I don't even want to talk about my other things. (laughs) That's our super long podcast. Yeah, I think this week's episode is going to be really long. So for those of you who stuck it out, ha we applaud you for for hanging out this entire time Thank also you. come and introduce yourself in the thread um tell us what your doctor name is and all that good stuff and try to win a pattern prizes 
Come play with us. Yay! <laughs> Come play. We like to play. All right. Bye! <sighs>